Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. So this is the 10 minute chart of silver on netdania.com. You can see sitting here at $17.61, we are at a pretty crystal clear pennant cup and saucer formation. You really don't get anything more textbook than that. Uh, traditionally, in non-manipulated markets, I would say there's a 95% chance that this is going to break out to the upside, probably through 18, fairly soon. Now, that being said, we have, ha we have manipulated markets, and we have had in the past very serious breakdowns out of these formations. It's not normal. It's not natural. It doesn't make sense in a market, uh, in a free market. But in manipulated markets, things can happen that don't happen in free markets. Now, a couple other real standouts here. This volume spike, you can see it coincides with this reversal right here, back down to the trend line. I've drawn double trend lines in because the thing is kind of, it's a little bit wonky. It doesn't completely hold a pattern, but you can see the upper trend line has a number of touch points and comes up to where we are. The test out of it that was reversed with this big volume touches down on this second support point. They're parallel, so it, it's a fairly strong chart pattern that we're going higher. Now, looking out to the long term, you can see that it's a fairly significant bounce back but there's a lot of uh, overhead resistance. The overhead resistance that it looked like we had taken out here when we got that 2150 price roughly that was in this area was really, really key stuff because after getting through that, all that is left is this 26 resistance, which is this whole huge area in here. So we could get a rapid move tonight, tomorrow, up through 18 but knowing the patterns that they follow we could also get a massive overnight smackdown to reverse all of this and to just completely dump out and destroy the technical pattern that seems to be emerging we'll know fairly soon next chart is going to be Bitcoin now it uh, was as I pointed out it was consolidating seriously consolidating on no volume whatsoever and then we had this blast off again seeming to be led out of China but it's hard to tell until this volume information bleeds off the chart maybe if we get to a 15 minute we can see so you can see a fairly serious uptick in OKCoin um, volume uh, nothing like we've seen in the past again they did away with margin buying in China so this is just real yuan chasing after Bitcoin. Uh, Bitfinex is, is floating down around 979. You can see it did, though, do the same kind of takeoff. 981 on Bitstamp. So based on the OK coin chart, a dollar equivalent, we really did already penetrate that $1,000 Bitcoin price again a couple of times here and here. So out to the three-day chart you can see the continuation pattern on the moving average lines here continuation pattern on the MACD crossover almost on the three-day clearly a crossover on the one day already so very bullish pattern I'm expecting based on this action I'm really expecting a test of the recent 1200 top that we put in uh, okay coin it shows that 8888 I'm going to say that within the next month or so, we should see a retest of that high. And if we get a breakthrough of that high, like I said, uh, tr historically, the pattern has been a tripling to anywhere from tripling to six-fold move. It's going to give us roughly five to $10,000 per Bitcoin before we get the next major correction. So... Uh, it looks to me like it's a very strong bullish pattern on both those charts. Now, let's get to the major story. I've been talking about the last couple of uh, updates. I've been talking about how there's going to be some kind of massive reflation. And the big issue, of course, is going to be the national debt and interest rates and 
the bond markets, how they're going to react. Well, we've got a clue as to what may happen right here. Uh, absolutely, for me, an absolutely shocking story uh, coming out on Zero Hedge that Japan is going to invest its pension funds. Now, this is not, uh, don't let the term pension deceive you. This is not private pensions. This is, this is public pensions. This is, I'll show you. This is the equivalent of their Social Security money in infrastructure in the U.S., so uh, imagine the, the equivalent would be uh, if they took your Social Security retirement money and invested it in infrastructure in Japan. Can you imagine how well that would go over? So here's the story. Having decided to actively increase its risk exposure over the past few years, including venturing into high beta stocks and junk bonds, a gamble that has led to a big jump in quarterly volatility, not to mention significant downside risk, should global markets suffer a crash, Japan's Government Pension Investment Fund, or GPIF, the world's largest pension fund, has decided to invest in U.S. infrastructure projects next. According to Japan's Nikkei, infrastructure investments in the U.S. by Japan's GPIF will feature heavily in the economic cooperation package to be discussed at ne next week's summit in Washington between the two countries' leaders. The stated goal is to create hundreds of thousands of American jobs in keeping with U.S. President Donald Trump's agenda and deepen ties between the two countries. The unstated goal is to avoid Trump lashing out at Japan as a currency manipulator and putting in peril Japan's QQE with curve control experiment, which is bedrock of all abonomics. Japan has grown nervous that after Mexico, China, and Germany, it may be the next nation to find itself on Trump's spotlight, something Trump hinted at yesterday during his meeting with pharma CEOs when he said that other countries take advantage of America by devaluation and then directly named China and Japan as planning money markets, presumably, presumably implying manipulation. As such, Japan's prime minister may be simply offering up billions in pension fund capital as a source of capital for the upcoming Trump infrastructure projects to placate the president and avoid a far more dire outcome should Trump launch currency or a trade war with Japan. Whatever the logic behind Abe's thinking, the new cabinet-level talks discussing trade policies and economic cooperation are agree agreements are also on the table. Japan's contingent headed to the U.S., would likely include Finance Minister Taro Aso, Economic Minister Hiroshiga Seiko, and Foreign Minister Fumio Kishida, the Nikkei reported. The U.S. is expected to send incoming Commerce, Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross and incoming U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer to that meeting. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and Trump will aim for an agreement on that framework during their February 10th meeting. Quote, I wish to discuss Japanese contributions toward improved productivity and competitiveness in the entire U.S. industrial sector or a large framework that includes aid for infrastructure development. Abe told members of the lower house Wednesday, his government has started to lay out a comprehensive initiative addressing job growth. He's addressing job growth in the U.S. Is this, have they lost their minds? Uh, the draft proposal will feature infrastructure investments in the U.S. by Japan, joint robotics and artificial intelligence research by the two sides, and countermeasures against cyber attacks. How will the Japanese mega fund allocate pension capital? According to the Nikkei, the GPIF will purchase debt using the funds of retired Japanese citizens issued by American corporations to finance infrastructure projects. Up to 5% of the roughly 130 trillion yen or $1.14 trillion in assets controlled by the mega fund can go towards overseas infrastructure projects. So that's not a lot. That's really only about $50 billion, but expect that to expand. Currently, only tens of billions of yen are invested in that asset class, leaving room for expansion. Additionally, long-term financing for high-speed rail projects in Texas and California would be provided through such avenues as Japan Bank for international cooperation. While we doubt Japanese pensioners are aware that the returns on public infrastructure are some of the lowest in the world, if not outright negative, we are confident they will learn soon enough, although since full IRR will become evident only 
over a period of years, they may have bigger concerns should the Nikkei or global stock markets where the GPIF is now heavily invested crash first. So astounding story, taking the retirement funds, and these are forced retirement funds. This is the Wikipedia Government Pension Investment Fund. The Government Pension Investment Fund, or GPIF, is an independent administrative institution under the jurisdiction of the Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare, established by the government of Japan, it handles fund management operation of both Japan's national pension and employees' pension. It's known as the world's largest public pension. GPIF has established investment principles set forth below, and it is mandatory. It is basically the Japanese social security system. So you can see the current investment allocation. It, uh, it invests 35% in domestic bonds, 25% in domestic equities, 15% in international bonds, and 15% in e international equities. Now, in my math world, that adds up to 100%. I don't see anything for infrastructure projects, maybe international bonds. Uh, this 15%, maybe that's the category that uh, that includes that number. Regardless, you can see right over here, total assets, $1.162 trillion or $1,162 billion. Really still in my mind, just a drop in the bucket, uh, but this is seems to be an indication of the direction that the Trump administration is going to take. It's almost like they are going to strong arm. You remember when Trump was running, saying that he was going to build a wall and he was going to make Mexico pay for the wall. Uh, it looks like he's doing something similar with Japan. I seriously doubt whether they could do this with China, but we have seen tremendous moves in the um, Chinese Yuan that I certainly was not expecting. So is this a sort of a last gasp uh, power move, power play by the U.S.? That's what it's starting to look like. Uh, is it going to succeed as far as fixing the problems in the United States? I cannot possibly imagine how it could. Now, what are these infrastructure projects? I don't know. What did they say? Robotics and cyber terrorism and building some useless rail lines somewhere. We've already gone over this stuff. Uh, I, honestly, if if it were my decision and uh, it was something, assuming it's something that I would believe in, which I really don't believe in government-funded infrastructure, if it's done correctly, it, it can be beneficial for the most part in a corrupt system. It will not be beneficial because it will result in tremendous graft, fraud, bribery, uh, overruns, looting, and ultimately just uh, dissipation. That's that's the record that we have so far with any of this, looking at all the stuff that happened under the Obama administration. But if I were to do some sort of infrastructure improvement, I would definitely have a program that just simply uh, mandates that by a certain date, we were, go we were going to spend X amount of infrastructure dollars to make sure that every single residence and every single business in the United States has a one gig to 10 gig fiber optic connection. That would probably do more to boost the economy in the long run. For me, that would be something similar to what the United States did in uh, the 19th century with the rails where the railroads were funded and ended up connecting the whole country together. I think Probably that sort of infrastructure project in the long run would be much more beneficial to the U.S. It would enable all kinds of work-at-home uh, situations that would decrease the cost of driving to work, uh, having all these buildings that people have to go to, the cost of maintaining them. I think that so much of U.S. jobs now uh, can be done from home, certainly customer service, tech support, uh, a large number of data entry and uh, document processing. All that stuff can be done from home. A lot of it is. Uh, it would also provide uh, a pipe for all the media that's necessary. So 
that would really be the only infrastructure project that I would see as being long-term beneficial for the U.S. Uh, the rest of it, um, I just don't see how any how rail lines are going to improve anything here in the U.S. when we don't really manufacture anything. And I don't think the pers- there's a, a prospect that we will, even though that's what Trump is saying. So I'm definitely not encouraged by that, but it tells me the direction that they want to take, and it looks like the direction they want to take is to strong arm our allies and possibly even our enemies into kicking this can down the road. That's what they want to do. I'm convinced that's what they want to do. Now, a lot of people are convinced that, and Moss Moon made a very interesting comment and chart uh, showing the LIBOR and the video also about uh, interest rates and how they're backing up and that tends to lead into a recession and that the elites plan to collapse everything under a Trump administration. Uh, For quite some time, I entertained that idea, thinking that Trump was going to be a fall guy, the scapegoat. They use that uh, to to have a fake political swing to the right and then uh, turn Trump into a Herbert Hoover type and have a huge swing to the left, such as what we had under uh, Franklin Roosevelt. That very well could be the case as well. But it appears to me that Trump is trying to at least uh, make good on uh, creating jobs in the U.S., even though I don't agree with the way it's being done. There's also a lot of uh, other stories hitting the wires where Trump seems to be making good. There's also one on the HB1 visa program where it looks like Trump may be targeting that which uh, I'll have to do a video on that. That's pretty much a uh, subsidy for U.S. tech corporations to have slave labor in the United States. And it looks like Trump may be targeting that. That would definitely increase jobs and wages in the U.S. if they did away with it or pressured it. But I'm not confident that that's going to happen. Like I said, I'll do a separate story on that. So you can see I gave it about a 90-something percent chance that this is going to break out to the upside. It appears that it is. You can see if we pull tight into the one-minute chart, uh, it looks like we're getting that. Let's go to five-minute. It looks like we're getting that breakout right now. I think we're definitely going to know by tomorrow morning. We're either going to have a significant break, probably up through 18, or we're going to get a nighttime smackdown, which may even take us down through 17, and we'll talk to you next time.